Hello, everyone. It is Sunday. July? Yeah, right. Okay. August 26th in the year of our Lord 2012, and I am wicked tired. How are all you doing out there? I am doing awesome as always. Wicked awesome. Just a little tired. Been up a long time. And let's start right off with our unofficial sponsors of the show. My good friend, Crystal Lloyd, Dozani, KJ Lloyd, Organo Gold Coffee. Um, absolutely beautiful young lady. Total sweetheart. Awesome friend of mine. And uh, great way to start the day. Or night. Or how, whatever you wish. www.kjloyd.organogold.com There you go. And let's go with my man, Tom Walk. General Manager of Stevens Rubber Stamp and Sign Company out of Abilene here in Yeehaw, Texas, where men are men and the bulls run scared. And there's your numbers to contact them if you need any of those above items done. And then, of course, my good man, Wally Fortier. Facebook.com slash WASPA. That'd be W-A-S-P-A-A. And uh, it's Wally's aluminum shaping process, not Wally's ass sculpting process, though he probably wouldn't mind that either if she's hot. If he was single, of course. And he makes all kinds of aluminum art. Denver Broncos logo, Patriots logo, Buffalo Sabres, Bills, whatever. Whatever you want, the man can make. He can make deer head logos, retirement logos. You name it, the man can do it. Phenomenal stuff. I know I've seen firsthand what that man can do. All right. With that said, let's get to the beer because I am parched. This is a good one. A lot of you love this. Yeah, baby. It would be in the New Belgium Brewery, Fat Tire Ale, the classic, the one that everyone loves. And it is a uh, 5.2%, of course. There you have it. The proof. Yes, I know I have permanent nerve damage, so I can't keep anything steady. Here we go. Of course, traditional uh, beer opening apparatus. Sorry, Justin. Didn't work out too well. What do you want from me, yeah? But you know that mug there, Justin, damn it. That's right. It was your inspiration to get your own mug done. Phenomenal. 45 degree angle as always, right over the keyboard because I can get away with that because I'm that good. Oh, yes it is. Cheers and beers to all of you and kumpai as they say in Japan. Ah, all right, there we go. With that said, before I even get to the birthdays, I got a very special happy anniversary shout out to give to a dear friend of mine. Uh, this wonderful couple, very good friends of mine, and uh, I only met them in April, but I feel like I've known them my whole life. And we keep in touch extensively on the old Facebook. And that would be my good friend Dan Pope and his better half, Darlene. Happy 45th anniversary to the two of youths. And uh, I hope you celebrate well, party hard, and enjoy. Absolutely phenomenal. 45 years of marriage. That is truly amazing, folks. That is, it's, it's an institution that people just don't take seriously enough nowadays. You're going to have good times and bad times. And I'll tell you what, Dan and Darlene, a big Big, big cheers and beers to you. A big old salute as well. And uh, very proud of the two of you. You are phenomenal. Your family is awesome. The Pope family. A big, big, big shout out to the Pope family. I got to hang out with them all in April in Florida. As I got to officiate the wedding ceremony of the wonderful Chuck Pope Jr. And his better half, Christina. Thank you to my man, Chuck Pope Sr. For the... Uh, airfare and all that and helping me out and letting me stay at the place with his better half Tanya and then of course Chuck's youngest sister uh, Carissa big shout out to you as well the bird talks um, Tim and Marlene Josh and Tim as well phenomenal phenomenal folks big shout outs to all of you miss you all big time but glad we can keep in touch on him and folks you want to see an amazing episode, check out the episode from April 13th. 
when it was recorded live in Florida, outdoors, with an entire studio audience. It was freaking awesome. It was wicked awesome. Still, I think my favorite show to this day that I've done. Really tough to say. I've done a lot of good ones. That one was probably the funnest and most interactive, certainly. All right, with that said, let's get to the birthday shout-outs. My good friend, Hallie Armour. I have known you since high school. Graduated a couple years after I did. But happy birthday to you. Hope you're doing well. Don't hear from you much on the old Facebook, but probably don't get on a whole lot unless I just missed your post somehow. But Hallie, as you remember, I was that crazy guy that memorized everybody's birthday in high school. And yep, I still haven't forgotten yours. And I don't plan to anytime soon either, unless I go see now. But Hallie, happy birthday. Hope you have a phenomenal day and I hope you get spoiled. Cheers and beers to you. Next on the list. Ah, the lovely Jessica Hinkle. Now, I've known this lady a couple years. In fact, she's so cool. We all went down to Bible camp last year. We found God and good scripture and good, good information. Great times. And uh, we really enhanced the minds well. Plus, there was some good beer at that location, too. That's always a plus. You know me and my beer. But see, Jessica is absolutely beautiful. She's a boom operator. We all know what that is. Yup, we sure do. That's right. So, Jessica, a big cheers and beers to you. And hope you have a wicked awesome day. Party hard and enjoy. Next on the list. I've known this wonderful lady since 1999. The lovely, I knew her as Jennifer Knowles. She is happily married. Jennifer Sanchez, happy birthday to you. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, Sorry, last time I visited good old Fresno, California. Didn't get to see you. Damn. Well, that's, there's always next time. We're going to have to hang out like old times. Because definitely an awesome group of folks. And uh, Jen, you're just real quiet, but totally, totally cool. And always a pleasure hearing from you on the old Facebook. Keep in touch. Hope you enjoy the show and you have a wicked awesome day. Next on the list. I've known this man a long damn time. Knew him before high school. I'm trying to remember what year I met him. Maybe it was 1985 Soccer League, I think. But my man, Jason Chalifu. Happy birthday to you. Graduated with my brother in the, one of the better classes in history. The Martha's Vineyard Regional High School class of 1992. Sorry, brother. 91 was better. Yup. Squeeze me. All right, but... But Jay, dude, I hope you have a phenomenal day. Celebrate well and enjoy. And uh, hope you enjoy the show, man. Because I do this every day. Got to have the beer. Got to have the music. Got to have the movie of the day or show of the day. Got to have the shout outs. And definitely a big shout out to you, my friend. Always been cool. Still are. And you know what? What do you think about our Red Sox? They blew that shit up, didn't they? You know what? Good. They needed it. They needed to. $191 million worth of wasted space. It's disgusting. Oh, I can go all day about that. Oh, yeah, and the Red Sox blew another six-run uh, six lead tonight against the Royals. Goody. Who cares? They've already thrown away the 2012 season, so <laughs> screw it. Whatever. Anyway, have a wicked awesome day, Jay. Next on the list, now, this one's a big milestone, and you know it is. My man, Kirk Manring. Now, I worked with this guy in good old California. That's right, the land of fruits and nuts. And he, if I'm not mistaken, a comical naver, a pointy head, a sharp-minded dude, a damn walking genius. And, uh, Kirk, big cheers and beers to you. I know you haven't heard from me in a long time. But, uh, let me know what you think of the show. I hope you love it. I know I enjoy doing it. Like George Carlin, I'm here to entertain and inform. That's what I do. But Kirk, you have a wicked awesome day, my friend. Hope you celebrate well and enjoy. Party hard a little bit. But uh, I know us, <laughs> us folks, as we get older, it takes a lot longer to recover, doesn't it? Yup. Well, you have a phenomenal day, my man. A big milestone to you. Big milestone. Happy birthday. And I'll salute that. All right. Now, how about some additional shout-outs? Let's do it. Let's give it up for uh, 
my good friend Dave and his better half Cheryl, I hope I get the last name pronounced correctly. Is it Petchus? Is it Petchus or is it Pet Petgus? Let me know. Is it a high G or a soft G? But anyway, Cheryl hooked me up really well. Now see, these are good Mafia Wars friends of mine. I have yet to meet them in person. But I feel like Sister Sledge. You know, we are family. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't sing. So <laughs> if I sing, windows break. So I'm doing you all a favor. I don't want your ears bleeding, okay? We won't do that. But Cheryl, thank you for hooking me up. For I am now a recruitment underboss. That's right. Moving up in the world. Moving up in the food chain. And I'm digging it. And I will do everything I can to help out and get some recruitment going on so our family can get even bigger and better than it already is. We already got the best family in Mafia Wars history. Hey, let's get better. Like a fine wine, get better with age, right? But anyway, Dave and Cheryl, you guys are awesome. I just want to give you a big cheers and beers. And uh, Cheryl, thank you so much for the help tonight. Phenomenal. All right. And finally, my man, Steve Gardner. Steve, what up, yo? How you doing, brother? Now, this was a bubble-chasing badass I had the distinct pleasure of working with here in Texas, otherwise known as Southern Oklahoma. That's right, Southern Oklahoma. Not a bad place here. But, uh, Steve, I just, I'm proud and honored to say What's up, Mr. Gardner? I had to. So distinguished. I'm very proud of you, brother. Missed the hell out of you, though. But, uh, you know, you know where I live. Always welcome to come back. Y'all come back now, you hear? Come back here and get some beer. Because I've always got beer for you and whoever else chooses to come by Casa de Love Doctor. Actually, it's Casa de Love Goddess. It's Ferris Castle, not mine. <laughs> I just live here. So, Steve, a big cheers and beers to you, and I give you the salute, my man. Mighty proud of you. Keep in touch. Hope you're doing well. You Neanderthal Mount Montana mountain man, you. That's right. Drink a moose drool. And drink one for me, too. Damn, I wish I had some moose drool. Oh. All right, with that said, let's get to some random facts of the days and birthdays and all that good stuff. On this day in 1980. That little midget kid Macaulay Culkin was born. That's right. He was a good good young child actor, especially in Home Alone. I thought that was a fantastic movie. But uh and Uncle Buck, another damn good one as well. But he got kinda weird, as a lot of child actors do. Dude, he dumped Rachel Minor. What the hell were you thinking? She's hot. Still hot. Good God. And there's nudies of her on the internet, by the way. Just thought I'd let you know that. Rachel Minor, R A C H E-L, I think it is. It could be A-E-L. Minor, M-I-N-E-R. Look that up. And look for boobies. If you like looking at things like I do. I have 2015 eyesight and I utilize it thoroughly. Believe me. If I stop looking, that's when my wife starts worrying. But I am a true, loyal, faithful, one-woman man. And damn proud of it. All right. On this day in 1920, this is awesome. The 19th Amendment went into effect... And women, about damn time, got the right to vote. Unbelievable. It took to 1920 for women to have the right to vote. If that ain't bullshit, I don't know what is. Well, better late than never, I suppose. On this day in 1843, this one's a good one. Charles Thurber, it patented the typewriter. Wow. That's awesome. Look where it's taking us now. Computer. Thank you, Mr. Thurber. On this day in 1974, Guinea-Bissau became independent from uh, Portugal. Guinea-Bissau, where's that dog to be? South America. Yup. One of those three little uh, small countries like Suriname, Guinea-Bissau, and uh, French Guiana. So there you go. Happy, happy Independence Day, Guinea-Bissau. On this day in 1961, the International Hockey Hall of Fame opened in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Perfect place for it, actually. No doubt about it. Hockey is definitely Canada's sport. Undoubtedly. On this day in 1955, the first color telecast of a tennis match occurred. It was on NBC, and it was a Davis Cup match. Cool. Very cool. On this day in 
on this day, 1947. About damn time this happened, too. The first Major League Baseball black pitcher um, pitched. And you know what? I forgot to write down his name, and I forgot his name. Son of a bitch. Look that up. Post it. I'll give you a shout-out on the show. Look it up. Major League Baseball's first African-American pitcher, 1947. Look it up. Now, here's the gig. He actually hit a home run on his first at-bat. First at-bat in Major League Baseball history. First African-American pitcher in Major League Baseball, probably since the 1890s. Incredible. So please, hook me up with the name, and I hook you up with a shout-out. Deal or no deal? On this day in 1946, George Orwell's ever-popular book, Animal Farm, was published. Nice. Good book, by the way. On this day in 1939, this was a huge milestone in sports. <coughs> Squeeze me. The first Major League Baseball telecast, in other words, television, yep, aired. And it was between the Reds, Cincinnati Reds, and Brooklyn Dodgers. And the Cincinnati won. Reds won. It was on W2XBS in New York. Imagine that. All right. On this day in 1929, the first United States roller coaster was built. I did not know that. I thought there was one from like 1913 or 1915. Chris Warner was. I have to look that one up and double check. On this day in 1883, and this is a huge, huge, huge natural disaster. In fact, it was so bad, the sky wasn't even perfectly clear for the next two and a half years all around the world. Krakatoa, Indonesia, erupted. That one was huge. Killed 36,000 people. Just a horrible disaster. One of the worst in history. Look that one up if you don't know about Krakatoa. If you don't know about Krakatoa, somebody ain't teaching you right in school. Anyway... On this day in 1873, the first kindergarten public school opened, and it was in St. Louis, Missouri. And on this day in 580 A.D., damn, I meant to bring a visual aid for this. The Chinese invented an absolute necessity. Thank you to China for this one. Toilet paper was invented August 26, 580. Cheers to that. Thank God. On this day in 1966, Shirley Manson was born. Lead, hot, sexy lead singer of the band Garbage. On this day in 1960, jazz saxophonist Branford Marsalis was born. On this day in 1935, first female vice presidential candidate was born. That's right, Geraldine Ferraro, 1984. They didn't win. Oh well. On this day in 1909, Frank Gasparro was born. Who's he, Dr. B? Look up initials on coins, particularly the 1965 to 81 era. Actually, I think he designed the uh, Lincoln Memorial Cent, if I'm not mistaken, 1959. There should be an FG to the right of the Lincoln Memorial. He's got his designer initials on a lot of coins. FG, look it up. You'll see. Look at your coins right now. That's Frank Gasparro. And on this day in 1838, John Wilkes Booth was born. And if you don't know who John Wilkes Booth was, you ain't paying attention to school, fool. Period. Dot. End of story. That's right. He's the he's the prick that shot Lincoln in Ford's Theater, April Fourteenth, eighteen sixty-five, and Lincoln died the next day. Terrible. Oh, and the play they were watching was Our American Cousin. All right. Well, there you go. Time for the uh, TV episode of the day. If you will. Because we're going to season one. Episode 10 of the Twilight Zone. And this episode. As soon as I find it on the back here. Is it that one? Mm, sorry about that folks. Nope. It's up here further. Oh boy. It is called Judgment Night. That one. Read it and weep. Season 1, episode 10, aired December 4th, 1959. And basically, I can't give you too much on this. 
1942 SS Queen of Glasgow heading from New York, British ship, and you've got uh, on board is a German named Carl Lance, Lancer, 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 however you want to pronounce him. He's got no memory on how he, no memory of how he got there yet. He has this feeling he's met all the passengers somewhere before. And he also has a certainty that an en enemy sub is stalking the ship. And something, he has a premonition that something's going to happen at 1.15 a.m. And folks, you got to watch the episode. Really, really impressive. Basically, think of it this way. Remember Groundhog Day with Bill Murray? This is kind of similar. I'll leave it at that. So, yep, yeah, he's German. Think about it. World War II, 1942. Hmm, German Karl Lanzer. Certainly an outstanding episode, to say the least. I promise you that. Written by Rod Serling. So there it is, your show of the day. Now, folks, you know what time it is? It's that time. Remember, it's Sunday, and it's gospel time. We need to fight God. We, we need to energize you. And what better way to do that than to bring out this incredible, incredible band. We're bringing out a great music group. And this one is from 1955 by the Dixie Hummingbirds. And the song is called The Devil Can't Harm a Praying Man. And if you don't like this one, I'm telling you, you must just cut your ears off because they're doing you no good, no how. Here you go. Absolutely phenomenal. Definitely got that rock and roll sound to it, too. Sadly, you want it's a WAV file. What I need, I don't, I do not have the song the CD. I had it on cassette. And I had to get it transferred, and it did a WAV file, and I don't know how to change it over. Do you realize that the Dixie Hummingbirds formed in 1928? And the last original member, James Davis, retired in 1984 after 56 years on the circuit. You know what's even more amazing? The Dixie Hummingbirds are still going today. That same name. Not, obviously not the same original members, but the band is still going. 84 years later. I'll drink to that. This is what music's all about, folks. I'm waking up. Gospel does that to me. Energizing me. Positively motivating me. and energy like that with good screaming. Eat your heart out, James Brown. You weren't doing that yet. See, James Brown didn't have his first recording until 1956. I do believe this is Ira Tucker on the lead. Yeah, Ira Tucker was born 1925 and he just passed away not too long ago, just a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I think 2008 or 2009. Well, there you have it. And the Dixie Hummingbirds definitely stayed up with the times, too. You should hear some of the 70s funky style music. Good gospel. All right, folks, you know what time it is, right? It's that time. It's time to make like a fetus and head out so everybody take care of a wicked awesome night and day. Peace be the journey. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Don't drink or drive. You might spill you drink or you might kill yourself or somebody else. And drinking and driving is dumber than being a Yankees fan. And what's dumber than that is rooting for douchebag cocksuckers like Eli. Oh, I'm as good as Tom Brady, Manning, or men slapping women. 
Things like that are just plain stupid. Squeeze me. Ah. I'm out of here. See y'all tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.